Welcome back. Previously on the Wonderful 101, we faced Lambo and his mighty cannons that we destroyed them in a baseball stadium. So, right now, we are continuing our adventures with the Wonderful 101. To the hmm. Goddess of Blossoms? Yeah. It's so a statue, just, apparently. So this is some plot. Shows how much you know, Monsieur Smarty Pants. She's the symbol of the city. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, it's like Statue, statue Liberty. Liberty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> basically, except more, worse. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty, but worse? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, because basically it's powering the entire Earth shield. Oh. That doesn't seem... Why would... Hmm. Is it out in the open? That seems like... Some pretty it's bad it's design. Like, it's basically like a secret generator. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, this is our first end... Of, this is like going to be our first sort of end of operation level sequence. And it's pretty epic, and it sets a tone for the rest of the game. So this is where shit starts getting really real. Oh, it's Metal Seedramon. Oh, no, that's... It's, yeah, that's exactly no, what I was thinking. No, it's Mecha King Ghidorah. No, no, that's definitely Metal Seedramon. That's Metal Seedramon. Sorry. <laughs> I still say Mecha Kinky Dora. Sorry, Metal Kinky Dora? No, it's a Godzilla monster. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, uh, wait, that's like a Hydra thing. Yeah, this yeah. is like a Hydra looking thing, I guess. Yeah, cut off one head, like seven more appear. Um, okay, so this sort of thing happens in every chapter, Jordan? Um, is this, like, there's some sort of big... Uh, threat that just spans the entire level. And of course, the little shit is inside that building. Mm. Oh, we've got to save the little shit, don't we? So yeah. are we going to get a mech suit or what? Later, but not... <laughs> maybe, but not now. Uh, when does the Megazord happen? Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> okay. What Megazord? So in about five minutes, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. I feel a flight sequence coming on. Mm. Oh, well, you Intriguing. might be right. <laughs> one double O. That's how you can tell this guy's fancy. Well, to be honest, everyone calls them one double O. They don't. They never ever call them wonderful one hundred. Weird. Huh. Must be a rights thing. Yeah. So this is their morphing sequence again. Nice. nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hype, 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 hype. I mean, they're already morphed, so it seems like space. It, it's know. a double morph. Yeah, whatever. This is just, yeah, this is just like their next form. It's like, it, put it this way, it's like Super Saiyan 2. Okay. Oh, okay. That actually makes sense. So it looks the same, but it's slightly stronger. Yeah. <laughs> there's but, it also, it, but it also makes it so that you start with, um, you automatically start with, um, with maximum battery. Oh, okay. But it hurts your teammates as you do it? No. It just, essentially, just, you, it's sort of mostly cosmetic, but it also just makes it slightly, you, it makes you slightly more powerful when you get um, your batteries up from the start. Oh, so this is like the hyperdrive mode in Pokémon. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, it's basically like, you know, wonderful 101 X Factor. Oh, they all get cooler masks, though. Yep, and our batteries are all filled. Not even it's a not even Energizer. Can break through this thing. The goddess of blossoms is no delicate flower. <clears throat> so this was a secret power source. How did this clown find about out about it? Who knows? I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it's secret or if it's well known. But I mean, like, you know, I somehow they found out about it. And the thing is, like, I. I could both to I could kind of believe they might know because in the chronology of this game apparently like this kind of alien invasion has happened before. Hold it right there, invader. So I mean this is like, you know, they're like, "Okay, we we've, we've been through the saga dance already." Oh, the brigade returns. <laughs> Speaking of cosplay, um, recently on Twitter, I happened to find some uh, tweets of Wonderful 101 cosplay, and it, it looked amazing. I've never actually like seen it. Is it all like nylon clothes? I don't, uh, I don't know what they're made of, but it's like it looks absolutely amazing. And I was just like, oh, how could this even exist? Has someone cosplayed as this three-headed dragon thing? Nope. This is Deku Orochi revived. I've never actually seen a 101 uh, cosplay. That, that'd be cool, though. 
Yeah, It'd be uh, even cooler if they got like a hundred and one people to do know, all the I, characters. I know. I will link you to the um, tweets, but yeah. So here is a, a unique thing. So every operation, more or less, has a unique sort of control feature. This is one is that we yes. have to use Unite Hand to operate the steering wheel of the ship while simultaneously shooting this thing and not getting hit. Yes, this is this is so cool. I like I like this. Yeah. So this is this is like one of our first sort of interesting, different sort of control methods that the game sort of um, throws at you. And so how are you actually does, controlling this sequence? It does like, this the entire like the entire game. Uh, so basically, you have to use Unite Hand in order to operate the steering ship. You just move regularly and try to dodge and weave and. So press, like you're just like, using like you're just going like left left analog stick. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, you press like A to shoot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any motion controls involved with the like reticule uh, or anything? Oh uh, no. no. Okay. Yeah. And it destroys the city as you do it, which is really really cool. Yeah. This whole sequence is uh, hmm, it's entices me to play the game. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of just like a slow moving Panzer Dragoon level. Sort of. It looks cool uh, though. Yeah, it is really cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys played Star Fox Two yet? Uh, no, no, I don't have an SNES and an S and SNES Mini. Mm. Apparently, I, it's. Just, I haven't played it yet, bad. but I but I did, but I do have the SNES Classic. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes, I'm also gonna. So that thing just got hacked recently. Yes. Um, yeah. So you can now load it with like whatever SNES games, and also NES games, and also GBA games, and also Genesis games. Nice. And it will still use the uh, it will still use like the menu screen of the SNES Classic. So it actually like doesn't completely break the console and make it look bad or anything. Like it's still got that cool presentation, and you get the good menu music and everything, and you still get like the save states and all that stuff. But you can just put any game on it. Nice. Okay, that's 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 pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. I'm I'm looking forward to it, even though the games that are on there are very good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Star Fox Two should be a, a, a good time. It Although looks interesting. See. Yeah, that's the perception I've gotten is that it is interesting. <laughs> Maybe like a little ahead of its time, but not necessarily like great to play in a modern context. Which hey, like that's fine. Yeah, it's, but, but it's more there for like as a cool as a cool curiosity. Right? Yeah, more for playing it for like its historical value and seeing what they had in mind for like the next Star Fox game on on the SNES. Yeah, because I hear they take a lot of like it, it expands on a lot of ideas that the first game did, but also it sort of leads towards a lot of the mechanics that were introduced in Star Fox sixty four, uh, like like the map system and a lot of like flight mechanics and stuff. I haven't played it myself, so I don't know exactly what, but Yeah, it's got like the transforming stuff. Like it's got like you you know, you, you become like a ground vehicle kind of thing. But it's also structured in a way that's kind of like a roguelike from what I understand. Like it's mm. like it's like you can kinda of beat it in like a half an hour and it's sort of like a run based game. Uh, it seems like really weird and, and kind of ahead of its time. Yeah. That, that's the only reason I would buy the uh, SNES Classic, to be honest, because, like, all the other games you can get through, like, emulation on, on the 3DS or the Wii You can. Wii I, I will say that, like, I like having it on, like, having it on the screen and having all the games there on the one time, having, it like, a really good HD, uh, like, upscaled version of those games, um, and being able to play on the actual controller. It's just, like, and also, like, the actual, it's cool. It's this tiny, this tiny little SNES. It's so cute. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 cool. I'm I'm glad that I bought one, and like as a result, I'm now playing through some games that I have been meaning to play through my entire life. Like I just started playing Mario RPG, which is a game that like oh wow. I never played that much of. Yeah, Harpoon. So that's it's it's cool. I'm I'm a fan. I like it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. When they make more, like I think next year, 2018, is when Nintendo said they're gonna pump out more models uh, may maybe yeah, I I'll think I'll there's already some more coming out uh, but they're going to be doing production until at least into 2018 and I think they're releasing more NES classics now. yeah so, did, did you uh, oh, no <laughs> Jordan oh, no no yeah, so what happened was that there's a there's a separate um, health bar for the you and the ship and the sh what oh. the ship died um, but um, yeah, because you have to sort of, this one's kind of hard, you have to sort of try and sh shoot the anchor, um, right onto the tail. Uh, oh, there yeah. you go. So. Nailed it. 
think so. <laughs> I, I, can't, oh, I can't tell no? if I nailed it or yes. not. Uh, I think you did. Yeah, the perspective's no, no. a little weird. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I died. But the thing is, but the fun thing about this game is that this game is re gets really hard at points. But it doesn't set you back to a beginning. It just sets you right back to where you were. So you can just continue right. as you were. You yeah, that's good that you don't have to fight through like the earlier yeah. versions of the boss, which, right? Which oh, I God. yeah, and which I hate about a lot of games. But I agree. Yeah, yeah. multi-stage boss, and you go back and go all the way to the beginning. Like, yeah, there we go. Well, oh, for yeah. me, oh, oh, that's. Yes. <laughs> uh, for me, it's like if it's a boss with like a lengthy cutscene that you have to rewatch every single time you die, then that's that's no good. Um, Yo, if you're a game that has unskippable cutscenes in the year of our Lord 2017, uh, you should rethink some things. Try again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you guys ever played Star Fox Adventures? This guy reminds me of yeah. General Scales. Uh, yeah. I played but that like, game like, for like an hour. A friend of mine I played, that, I played that game and then got stuck and never finished it. <laughs> it's, it's a solid, like, Zelda-esque game. Yep. So, we are about to fight Orochi on its back. Nice. Yes. This is a very... <laughs> I feel like this is a very Platinum Games thing to do. Yep. Like, this is a very, like, Bayonetta-type thing to do. Like, oh, you're on a gigantic monster. <laughs> now kill it. Yeah, kill the gigantic monster. This is also very God of War esque. Yeah. Okay, so what's the strategy here, Jordan? Like, d just shoot it till, till you get down to the next phase, or? You have to kill. You have to attack it while also dodging everything. Oh man, I is this one of those bosses where you have to defeat both heads like simultaneously or close? Uh, like close to each other, otherwise one will revive itself, or no? Oh, okay. But no, but the thing is, though, you there are um, I guess I'm in the, I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, this one guy for some so for some boss fights they do end up for doing something that ends up spawning more characters for you to, to use, which also helps uh, the difficulty because this game can get really hard if you don't have many characters with you. Hmm. Oh my god, so, it's chaos, the god of destruction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically you have to keep attacking both of the heads and they will attack back. So it can get actually kind of hard because you can be trying to kill to attack one and then the other one will attack you. Also, because they're far away from you, kind of Unite Gun is kind of your best bet at the moment. Mm. That's interesting. I feel, I feel like Platinum... I feel like character action games, but even including Platinum, have sort of gotten away from having actually difficult bosses. Like, uh, this game I feel like is if you compare the bosses in Bayonetta to the bosses in, like, Devil May Cry's 1 and 3, there is, like, a noticeable, uh, it's, you know, it, they're not really very difficult. They're, they're, oh. they're not super easy, but they're not, like, that hard. This, the, the boss fights in, in 104 are actually pretty difficult, and they have like some like contextual button prompts and, and some of the attacks, so you have to really know their patterns. Uh, like for example, that little scream, I there is something that it was telling me to like be ready for, but I had to have the right Unite form ready, and I had no clue which one it was that they wanted me to use. Question, would you guys recommend, like, it, 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 for someone like me who would like, want to get into the Bayonetta series, maybe. Uh, would you recommend starting with the first one or just diving into the second? So here's the second, like, improved a lot of quality of life things and stuff, well, if you but I don't know if second, it would make sense to story. You get the first one. Uh, actually, that's oh. not true anymore. Oh, not anymore? No. That was uh, only a limited well, time thing. So much for that. I mean, you can also get the first one on PC, so. Yeah. Mm. Um, I recommend starting with the first one, uh, if only because um, it will make... Uh, oh, there's Lambo. That uh, guy is make... a lot bigger than he looks yeah. in the cutscenes. Yeah, so the thing about Bayonetta 2 is that Bayonetta 1 and 2 make absolutely no sense, but at least with Bayonetta, if you play Bayonetta 1, Bayonetta 2 will make some degree of sense. Mm. Not And not a lot of sense, but some degree. Okay, okay, Kingdom Hearts Syndrome. Yeah. It's not as bad as Kingdom Hearts, but it's... Yeah, I, I don't know. I ha so I, I still haven't played Bayonetta 2. It's, it's like, on my list. I own that game, but I have not played it. Um, 
Bayonetta 1 is fun. It's it's good. I've heard Bayonetta 2 is, like, kind of a better game. It is. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. But, but Bayonetta 1 is, like, still... It's quite good. Um, there are a couple frustrating moments, but it's nothing too bad. Um, and it's a very good, like, first character action game, I feel like. Okay. It's a thing that I would recommend as one of those. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not super difficult. It has, it ha you know, specifically it introduces this, like, witch time mechanic, which is this dodge that you can do. And the dodge by itself will dodge, like, enemy attacks. Um, but if you time it at the right, at exactly the right time, you can slow down time, which makes comboing easier oh. and, and does more damage and stuff. Um, and that mechanic can make that game a lot more beginner-friendly than something like Devil May Cry 3, for example. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Ba and Bayonetta 1, it's, it's good. I, I don't think the story doesn't make sense, necessarily, but it is very outlandish and over-the-top and crazy. Um, but it's like got an okay... It's got a decent little core story to it, which is um, weirder than I expected going <laughs> when I first played that game. Okay, uh, one dragon just, like, threw up all over you. Another one's foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening to them, man? Uh, things are happening. That's all we need to know. Ah. Uh. Oh, that, okay, yeah. that's... Yeah, That's, uh, like, I, very twin robot. That's cool. Yeah, that's, uh, it took me a while to remember that, yeah, the, um... If you use, uh, the sword, you can reflect lasers for some odd reason. That's awesome. It, it, it didn't seem like the game tells you about that though, so that's it I guess does. one of those. Ah. It does. Well, it I does, that. Yeah, it does tell you, but it's from a, a previous level, which is why you need to like sort of remember how a lot of things work, and you need to know all your forms and what they can do. Hmm. FedEx just called me, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, do you have? Are you expecting a delivery? Nope. They delivered something to me a while ago. And then I forgot to pay, like, the import fees. But then I just paid them. So I don't know what happened. <laughs> they want more from you. to tell me that they, they have to, uh, I don't know, take all my assets. And... <laughs> yeah, it, I'm pretty sure if, if somebody else was playing this game who was, like, super good at it, like, they'd be finished this quick right now. I don't know what my guys are doing over there. Is, is there a speedrunning community for, for 101? Uh, yeah. I'm sure there is. Probably. There's gotta there's a, be. There's a speedrunning community for, like, the randomest thing. There's, like, a speedrunning yeah, community. Yeah, that's like, a high-skill game with a cult following. Which makes me think it's gotta have some speedrun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where it starts getting really cool. God. Man, this thing does not quit. Like, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I do like how exhaustive this boss fight oh, is. Oh, yeah. Like, the, here's the thing about class, Platinum games that I, I fucking love, which is like, you know, this, in any other game, this would have been the end boss. But no, this is like the first boss. Yeah. Well, not in God of War. In that game, the first level would be this boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is pretty cool. Uh, oh, man. Are you taking over that dragon? Yeah. Over but, dragon. Here we go. Yo, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool thing, Jordan. Oh man, this is this is great. Nice, uh, yeah. This is a kids game, right? <laughs> well, it's a kids game. <laughs> Listen, you should see some of the shit. I don't know when the last time you played Super Mario Sunshine was. There's some fucked up shit in that game, and that game oh. is actually a kids uh, game. Uh, what kind oh, of? The, the, there is quite a lot of fucked up shit, Dan. But like, like, there's a part where the, you have to fight a tentacle monster and you destroy it by ripping off all of its arms systematically one by one. Oh yeah, the blooper with the with the cork in its nose or something. Yeah, that's fucking. So, guys, guys, up. guys, guys, do you hear the tables turning? What? I hear. Say goodbye to oh, oh, I see what's happening. Okay. This theme is called Table's Turn, and it's the hype theme of the game. Anytime this plays, you know something great's gonna happen. This is also a very Bayonetta thing right now. Yeah, so whenever you hear this theme, shit is getting real. Mm. Cool. So now, to explain to, the, to anybody else what is exactly is going on, you are now falling from, like, thousands of feet in the air, fighting a dragon on debris, trying to catch a gigantic statue. 
what's really cool is that like most games that would have this sequence these days i find this would be like a a, a qte uh yeah. but here like you're you're actually still like doing a ton of shit which is yeah it's, it, it is actually a little bit of qtes but you're actually doing things yeah yeah like you're still in full control of what of what's going on and you can't really afford to mess up yeah. yeah, so this is also how Bayonetta 1 starts, right? Like, Bayonetta 1 starts that you are on these pieces of debris falling in the sky, and you're sort yeah. of, like, fighting on those things. So it's a very, again, it's like a very platinum thing to do, but it is yeah. very cool. Uh, I, I actually really love that main theme. I think it's, I think this game's got, like, a really, it's got a style that it leans into, right? Like, this sort of uh, old-school, Super Sentai, oh, yeah. Japanese, crazy action sort of thing. Yeah. And the music does a really good job of selling that, as, oh, yeah. as well as the visuals and, and, you know, things like the building you design and, and these sorts of things. Yeah, so we're fighting against time, trying to fight this thing while making sure that the statue doesn't hit the ground. Yeah, this is really spoiling Pacific Rim 2 for me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see that trailer? I didn't watch it. Oh, uh, it, it was pretty it good. It looks amazing. Yeah, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, this... Like, the thing is, like, this is only the tip of the iceberg. This game gets a whole lot crazier later on. That's and great. And a lot of, like, even more insane shit like this happens. Yeah, great. That's what I want to hear. Uh, but I, I know the levels also get, like, much longer, also much more difficult. Like, oh, is yeah. that a thing? That, that That's the general consensus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Heard. Nice. So, we, we have, we have, uh... We have the statue, but we're not done. <laughs> that thing just doesn't quit, man. No, it keeps on going just when you think it's over. It's and we're not done going. either. So is this is, is this you deciding like what? Uh, unites you want to use, or is no, the game like now use this? It's, it's automatically prompting me. It's a it's oh. a contextual QTE, right? Oh, pretty like, similar to the stuff that we saw in DMC. It's yep. like it's a QTE, but it's using the control stuff that you that you've already that you've already yep. used to, right? Th right? Here we go. And I messed it oh. up. I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Come on, Jordan. Make it happen. Oh no! Okay, oh. nice. <laughs> nice. Man, the scenery is just stunning. Like, the fact that you can actually, like, see yourself dropping, and it seems pretty accurate. Like, like there, there seems to be, like, a steady um, decline yeah. of the speed of what you're going. You notice that he's, he's flying a headless thing. Cool. Yeah, it's dedication. Just over two oh, minutes no. before you... Okay. Uh, oh. Oh. I, I keep thinking you're going to miss it. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Building the arrow. And just like one... There we go. Damn. And... Shot. Oh, man. Yeah. That's cool. That's Think neat. it's over? We're not done. <laughs> There's still like two minutes of this episode. Is oh the entire God. thing just them <laughs> tearing this guy apart? Man, yeah. <laughs> that is super cool. Yeah, the thing is like, after all that, it is so satisfying to get to the end of that. Sure. Is he trying to fuse himself back together? It seems like it. It's pretty disturbing. Yeah, a little bit. I'm amazed that he can do it. <laughs> the ultimate late, like, samurai late. Cut in half. Yeah. <laughs> womp, 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 womp. <laughs> like, he knows he's cut in half, but it's not done yet. And we have saved the Blossom statue. <laughs> I kind of wish the entire game was just this part. 
mm, and not like, like the, the ground the cool level bosses. Stuff. Yeah. Well, to be honest, like you still get a whole lot of that this entire game. Sure, I believe you. Like the, the thing I just is, feel like, like that was so much cooler than like I mean, the rest of the game seems cool, but oh, it, it was, gets uh, cooler. And this like this is like a small level threat. It scales so much by the end of the game. It's kind of insane. Mm. Well, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> He's a student in my class. Well, everybody, we have uh, finished the first general operation for the wonderful 101 and have beat our first major boss. It all gets more insane from here. Great. Hang on, that kid is still stuck on, on the Blossom, right? Yeah. I also noticed that kid has the same scarf as the dude from Bayonetta. I, it's a reference, and you notice yeah. he has the same name as well. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah. Cool. But it, it, the thing is, in Luca, in Bayonetta, Luca is like cool, and and Wonder Woman One, like Luca's a little shit, and I kind of. Oh, hate him. I wouldn't say Luca is cool. Well, he's okay in Bayonetta. He's but... like an annoying shit bag, mostly. <laughs> Oh, if you think he was an annoying shitbag in Bayonetta, Luca in Wonderful 101 is like 10 times worse. Fair enough. <laughs> what do they have against the, the the name Luca? I don't know, but like, they tried everything to make him unlikable, and then they tried to redeem him, and in my eyes, they never really succeeded with that. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's a terrible character.